Hi, this is Doc Mountain, and I welcome you to Physics and Math Made Simple. In our video today, we are going to look at radioactivity, and then we'll jump into the nature of radioactivity. Without any further ado, let's take a ride. What is radioactivity? Well, radioactivity is simply the disintegration of an unstable nucleus with the emission of radiations. So to disintegrate simply means to break down. It's the breaking down of the nucleus, thereby releasing some radiations is what we call radioactivity. Now what causes the disintegration of a nucleus? What really causes the disintegration of a nucleus is actually of a bombardment of the nucleus with more neutrons. So now this actually leads to what we call instability. And this actually results in the imbalance in the ratio of the neutron to proton. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, examples of stable nuclei and what they look like. So these are the examples at the bottom here. As long as the ratio is close to one or is one, then that nucleus, that nucleus is actually stable. So here we have carbon with the mass number 12 and the proton number six. So now if we have the proton number six, then we need to know the mass number is actually a combination of neutrons or the number of neutrons as and the number of protons. So we have the ratio of neutron to protons as six to six. We can actually simplify this one and we're going to find that we're going to have one to one. Then calcium as well, which has the mass number 40 and the proton number 20. So we have the neutron proton ratio which is 20, 20, 20 to 20. We have magnesium with the mass number 24, proton number 12. So we have the neutron proton number 12, 12. You may be surprised at how these are coming about. I will actually hedge you to watch the first, the first videos that I did when I just started this topic, atomic physics. I, where we had to look at an atom and the nuclide notations. Okay, so now we have nadium, which is sodium, with the mass number 20, 22 and uh, the proton number 11. So this one has the ratio of neutron proton number 11 to 11. So this can be simplified and we're going to have one to one. Now, if the ratio increases, the nucleus becomes unstable. Let's take a look at a stable nucleus examples. So a nucleus which has a neutron to proton ratio greater than one to three is unstable. So these are examples. Um, and the first example is that of radon, which has the mass number 228 and the proton number 88. And then the the neutron proton ratio is 1 to 59 these are simplified ones then we have actinium which has the the mass number 228 and the proton number 89 the neutron proton ratio is equal to 1 to 56 we have thorium which has the mass number 228 and the proton number 90 it has the ratio of neutron to proton is 23 to 15. Then we have uranium with the mass number 238 and proton number 92. The neutron proton ratio is 73 to 46. Okay, so now what you need to know is that nuclei which are unstable, and those are the ones with the ratio which is greater than 1 to 3 which is the ratio of the neutrons to protons, which is greater than one to three. Normally they disintegrate. And when this happens, a tiny particle of matter is released 
Sometimes a quantity of energy in the form of a wave is released too. The particles and the particles and waves that radiate from the nucleus are called radiations. The emission of radiations by substances is called radioactivity. Substances that emit radiations are said to be radioactive. Now let's take a look at the nature of radiations. Now all radioactive elements happen to radiate uh, some some radiations, and the nuclides have certain features. What are these features? The characteristics of these nuclides. So they cause certain compounds to fluoresce, to fluoresce, to fluoresce. The radiations from radioactive elements produce bright flashes of light when they strike certain compounds. For example, radium causes zinc sulfide to glow in dark. For this reason, a mixture of radium and zinc sulfide is used to make luminous paint. They cause ionization of air molecules. The radiations from radioactive elements knock out electrons from molecules of air. This leaves the gas molecules with positive charge. An atom or groups of atoms with a charge is called an ion. The production of an ion is called ionization. So the bottom line is they cause ionization of air molecules. What else do they do? Or what other characteristics do they have? They, they affect a photographic plate. And so radiations from radioactive elements can penetrate the heavy black wrapping around a photographic film. When the film is developed, it appears black where the radiation struck the film. They also cause damage to the health of living things. So radiations from Radioactive elements can destroy the germination of the germination power of plant seeds. They can they can kill bacteria and burn or kill animals. They also cause damage to the cells in the bodies of living organisms. Okay. And they undergo a process of decay. The atoms of radioactive elements are continually decaying, breaking down into simpler atoms as a result of emitting radiation. However, it is not possible to predict exactly when a particular atom will decay. Now, let me wrap up this with indicating, or by indicating that there are two types of radioactivity. There is what we call artificial and natural radioactivity so natural radioactivity normally takes place spontaneously meaning it just occurs on its own which is why you can predict when it's going to take place anytime it can take place for artificial radioactivity there are some human activities artificial activities that are involved to kick start radioactivity well in the next video, we are going to look at the types of radiations that are radiated when an unstable nuclei, nucleus decays. If you want to see that video, make sure you subscribe to my channel and make sure you turn on the notification bell so that in time I happen to post a video, you happen to be alerted. Thank you so much for watching. This is your friend and your brother, Doc Mountain. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on.